Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number two in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning robots using the Elegoo Smart Car version 3.0. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. I'm going to need you to get out your Elegoo Smart Car version 3. What? You don't have your gear yet? Look in the description down below. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick up your gear and that way we will be working on identical hardware. It will make your life easier and make my life easier if we are using the same kit. So what we are going to do today is we are going to open up this bad boy and we're going to start the physical assembly. I estimate that it's going to take about two hours of mechanical build time to put this thing together. And so we are going to be working together and I'm going to make two videos. My goal for this video is to get the lower deck put together and then in the second video which will be lesson number three, we will get the upper deck put together and get the two decks connected. And then in lesson number four, we'll actually start programming this thing. So let's get out our gear and let's get ready to learn some stuff. Now, a couple of things on the mechanical build, all right? Now, there's things that you're going to learn just by putting this together. And that is, is that you need to have a good workspace to put this together in. Little things like don't do it over carpet because there's some really small pieces and if you drop one of those small screws on carpet you're never going to find it so you need a nice large flat area to build on and then also I don't want you to start the build unless you have an hour to put into it because you don't want to get in the middle of it get interrupted okay and then have to come back later. You, you want to kind of build it in nice chunks and an hour will get us to a good stopping point. Another thing is don't do it on the dining room table. Don't do it on the kitchen countertops. Don't do it somewhere where someone will come in and disturb your work. And so if you have a room with a desk that you can dedicate to it that's not over carpet, that's good. Also might think about setting up a workbench out in the garage or something like that. But you want a nice clean large flat work area don't do it in your lap watching TV or something like that. you got to have a nice organized work area. And then you want to have an hour to spend on it. And then you want to make sure that you don't drop things on carpet because you'll never find those little screws if you drop them. And I'm not sure how easy it is to get replacement parts. You might just have to buy a new kit if you lost some of the parts. And so I will be working here on my desk top. Okay. And let me get out of your way. And let's just rip into this thing. Well, today I have a nice little knife to open it up. But let's open it up carefully. Also, when you cut into it, be a little bit careful cutting into it because you don't want to cut into the box. And so I am going to begin by cutting open this nice package. And I'm going to be extra careful not to come and slice my wrist and cut into an artery. I will try to cut carefully with this knife, as I hope you will. This has got kind of bubble wrap, so it's turning out to be a little bit harder than what I thought to open neatly. But I think we're getting it there. Okay. At some point, we're just going to get give up on this nice, neat open and just rip into it. But I think we can get it opened up kind of carefully here. I just don't want to mess the box up underneath it as I am cutting. Okay. I believe we have enough now to get it out of the envelope that it came in. And there it is. The Smart Robot Car. The Car Kit 3.0 Plus. A very nice kit. So we'll get the envelope out of the way and then we will open this thing up and see what we have. What I really like is I like how neatly the thing is put together. And we're going to go ahead and take these three out. Save the box because we're not going to finish the build today. And so you are going to want to be able to go back in and put things back in the box. And so I'm taking everything out of the box and then putting the box away. You should have 
four boxes, four inside boxes inside uh, of the outside box. And what we're going to be getting out is <coughs> this large square box because it has our decks. It has our lower deck and it has our upper deck. Okay. And so you can see that we have the two decks. And now we are going to be faced with probably what is the hardest thing of this entire build, and that's to get these, uh, that's to get this paper coating that is kind of on top of the plastic off. I have found something like this, a razor blade knife or an X-Acto knife will help you do it carefully. And what I found is, is that you can come into a corner and try to carefully get it started on a corner. And you really want to try to bring this, you really want to try to cut this off as much as you can. You want to peel this off as much as you can in one piece. And so once you get it started, you've got to kind of work to go around the corner because if you rip it, it can be hard to get it started again. And we want to have a nice, neat build. And with a nice, neat build, we want to not end up with this paper, little chunks of paper left on there. And this area here is particularly challenging to get around. Sometimes when I get to a hard spot, I'll come and try to kind of help it get started again with the knife. But once we get around that corner, we will be able to pull this uh, pull this off all in one piece. I don't know if you guys followed along on my Jetson Nano class where we had to put together that, uh, what was it, a Yaboom or Yahoo case or something like that. And that one was really hard to do all of the, all of the peeling on. Okay, this one's going along pretty well. We're just going to kind of come along like this. We'll come back later and get that off. And I believe I have lost focus. I need to give it something to focus on there. I really want this thing to stay in focus for you guys so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. I'll come over here and peel this off. How many of you guys have already built this and didn't wait for me? I know one guy uh, had already jumped ahead. We need to build this together, guys. Don't jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. And also, when we start programming, I am not going to be using the pre-written code. We are going to be writing the code ourselves. Okay, that looks pretty good. We got that. Got a little bit left here that I will come. And I try to be really careful to not scratch. To not scratch. The plastic as we're taking this off. Okay. I hope you guys have a little exacto knife or a little razor knife. It really makes it much, much easier to do the build if you have one. Okay. One off and four more to go. Or three more to go. All right. I don't know why it has A on it. On both of them it has A. Wouldn't it have been neat if they labeled one top and one bottom? Because I'll tell you, you know, I, I showed you guys last week that I already built one of these. I built it. I had to take it apart. I had to rebuild it. I had to take it apart. Because it's very easy to not get things oriented correctly. And you've got to know what's the top deck, what is the bottom deck, and then you've got to know what the top side of the top deck and the bottom side of the bottom deck is. So after we get this horrible paper off of here, what we are going to do is take a second to get our orientation and label it, label the different sides. There's four sides, top of the top, bottom of the top, top of the bottom, and bottom of the bottom. And you will see that your life will be much easier if you take a second and label what's what. And that way, as we build, we can build a lot faster because we don't have to continue to try to figure out what our orientation is. Okay, almost got this first deck, and even now, I don't know this first deck. I don't know if it's the top deck or bottom deck, but we will figure that out in a minute. Okay, one deck, 
one deck is done. So I'll put that out of the way. We will begin on our second deck here. And same thing, like to try to start it neatly in a corner. One time in peeling this paper off, I kind of got it torn. And then where I tore it, it was really hard to go in and get it restarted again. And it kind of leaves a little, it leaves a little mess on the plastic. I guess the reason they put this on there is is that so you get it and it's not scratched. It doesn't get scratched in uh, in shipping. And so I guess it's a pretty good reason, but it's just kind of like not real easy to get this off. And we don't like when it does that. Okay, and we are three out of four. We are getting there. And this will be our final side here. Okay, I think I got it started. These big labels that say A, they're really not helping me out. They're not helping me out at all. Okay, this one is turning out to be a little harder. All right, I think I got a good start on it there. Okay, this is going really, really well. And we are going to have this off in no time. This is what you don't want, but I think I can get that. I tried doing one with my thumbnail, and it is hard to get these things to come off neatly, starting it with your thumbnail. So... The little knife def definitely makes things easier. Okay. We are almost there. Okay. Now, what we need to figure out is we have our two decks. The first thing that we need to do and I'm trying to be very mindful to keep this in your view. We need to figure out what the top deck is and what the bottom deck is. All right. And I will tell you the top deck is the deck that has the square hole. And what I need you to do is move that square <laughs> hole where it is to your right. Okay. The square hole is to your right. And this is the top deck. The square hole is to your right. Now, we're narrowing things down to get our orientation correctly for the build, but you have to see that this is different than this. It is not symmetrical. And the reason it is not symmetrical is these three holes are on one side and they're not on the other. So what I need you to do is get your top deck here. Okay, I need you to have the square hole to the right and then I need you to have those three little holes towards you. And now we are oriented correctly. And what you can do is this now is the top. This now is the top of the top deck. And I need you to label that. So I need you to get a little piece of tape of some type and a Sharpie of some type. And I need you to label this as one because we're going to kind of label one two, three, four. And that way we can keep track of what is what. Okay, so I'm going to cut that down a little bit. I don't need that big of a piece of tape for this job. But we will put this here. And now we are going to label this as side one. And side one is the top of the top. And now we are going to label this as side two. Okay. And try to put them just like I'm putting them, side two. All right. Now, this is the bottom deck. All right. And the bottom deck also is not symmetrical. All right. So this is different than this. And so what I need is I need you to find the side 
that has the four holes. You see one, two, three, four. You've got the big hole, and then you've got one, two, three, four. I need you to put that to your right. Okay, the four holes to your right, and now we are going to label this as side three because this will be the top of the bottom deck. This is the top of the bottom deck, and we are going to label this as side three, and then turn it over, and you guessed it. This is the bottom of the bottom deck, and we are going to label this as side four. Now, we spent five minutes probably doing this, but we're going to save hours because we are going to be able to get it together correctly now without making mistakes. And so this is the top deck, one and two, and this is the bottom deck, the bottom deck, three and four. And so we're going to work on the bottom deck today, and hopefully we'll make a lot of progress. I'll look for a good stopping point along here at some point, but I'm hoping that today, in today's lesson we can get this bottom deck mechanically assigned. Now if we go back to our three remaining boxes, what we are going to find is something really neat. We're going to find all the neat little components that are in here. If you open up the largest box, what you will find in there is you will find the motors. And so I'm going to need you to go ahead and get the motors out. Okay, go ahead and get the motors out. And the wheels right now we don't need, the remote and the cord we don't need. So we will close this back up and move it out of the way. All right, so we have our four motors. And now you can open up the more square box, right? The more square box, and let's see what we have in here. Okay, we have got this little, uh, this little uh, bag, and I will show you a close-up. I am trying to have kind of like a cool setup here. We'll see how well this works uh, to show you when we need to. Uh, Give me just a second. I will get my audio-visual stuff working better, but let's see here. Did that work? Okay, I believe that worked. So what you need is you need to get out this little bag of goodies, the little bag of goodies that says for the motors. Okay, for the motors. So you need to get those out because we are going to be needing those. And then let's see, I think that is going to be what we need for right now. And I will go back over here and get you a good view again. All right. So we've got our motors and we've got the thing of nuts and screws and so forth that says four motors. You notice that this is a Ziploc bag. This is a little Ziploc bag. You want to get out what you need and then you want to zip it back up because you don't want these rolling off. You don't want to lo lose them because they didn't give you uh, really any spares in here or maybe uh, a couple of things there was a spare on but you don't want to lose one because you're going to need pretty much every single part that they give you there. All right so what we need to do is open up our little four motors thing, a uh, little four motors Ziploc, and we need to get out these little square mounting brackets. Okay, you see the square mounting brackets? Get out those four square mounting brackets. One, two, three, four. Okay, the four mounting brackets. All right. Now what I need you to do is you will see that in here there are large, and let me see if I can go back over here so you will be able to see it well. Okay. You see that there are large hex nuts. And what is meant by a hex nut? Well, a hex nut has a little square indentation. It's like a screwdriver, but it's almost like a hex-shaped head. And so you are going to need to get all of those out. And it is the long ones, okay? These short ones, these short ones will be used later. You need to get all the long ones out and set them up. And 
And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we have all of those out. And then we're also going to need eight of the little nuts. And so I'm just going to pour out in my hand. No, we don't need the little nuts. I'm sorry. I don't believe we use those little nuts yet. So everything goes back in the bag except the eight large hex nuts. Everything goes back in the bag. All right. We have laid out our eight long hex nuts. We have our four mounting plates. And now we are going to get out the first motor. Okay, so we're going to need one motor. And then what I want you to do is face the wires towards you. Okay, so you see where the wires come out? Face those towards you. And as those are facing towards you, then you're going to put the square plate on the same side where the wires come out like that. Okay, so you see on the same side that the wires come out, that is where you put the, uh, the square mounting plate. Now you need to drop those two hex screws down through those holes, those two long hex screws down through the hole. Now we can come and we can get two nuts out of our bag. Again, it's the four motor bag. And we're going to get the two that we need. Reseal the bag. All right. Reseal the bag. Now we will come in and we will put these nuts on the end of the screws like that. And right now we're just going to hand tighten. Okay. So we will hand tighten. A little hard to get these little screws started. And that's why you got to be real careful because it's real easy to drop them. All right, so the plate itself is on the side where the wires come out. And now our friends at Elegoo were kind enough to give us, if we look in this other bag with all the electronic components, I lied, it is not there. Somewhere in here is a hex screwdriver. Ah, it's in this square box. And if we look down in the bottom with a green handle, okay, with a green handle is this hex driver. It's kind of like a screwdriver. But we're going to need that. So we're going to get that out. And now what you can do is if you'll hold, if you'll hold the nut with your finger, you come in on the other side and you tighten. And you need to kind of tighten it down pretty good. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want to kind of get it where it's snug. Get it where it's snug and then kind of give it about a quarter more turn so that it's on there nice and tight. Okay, we've got the first motor done. We will put it over there. We will get out our second motor. Okay, our second motor. And again, wires facing towards us. We'll line this plate up over the mounting plate up over the large holes. We'll put our two hex bolts through here. We'll turn it over. And now we need two more of the nuts. Okay. Okay. Everything goes back in. Seal the little Ziploc up. And now we will get that on there. Get this on here. And tighten. Come over here with our driver. 
try to hold that other end. I really appreciate how Elegoo gave us all the little tools that we needed to put this together. I wish they'd given us a little tiny wrench for these other nuts because it's a little awkward having to hold it with your uh, with your fingers. And it would have been nice to have a little wrench that was just made just the right size for that. But that is not included, so we'll do the best we can. Okay, two. We are <coughs> we're going to go to motor number three. You ought to be getting pretty good at this by now. And so on the side where the wires are coming out, we put the little mounting plate. After we put the little mounting plate, then we put hex bolt one and hex bolt two all the way through upside down. We need to get two more nuts. You know, guys, when I was growing up, my dad built things with me. And so he taught me all of these things about staying organized, about not doing things over carpet, about doing things carefully, how to not lose things, how to do things methodically and carefully. And it just seems like that parents don't teach kids that anymore, like dads don't take the time with their kids. And so if you guys are granddads, grandpas, fathers, spend time with your children and teach them how to do careful work, how to do neat work, you know, how to do work that you can be proud of. Now, this really is not a bad job. It just, it can be tedious. And so you just got to think there's no hurry. It's not a race. We're going to take all the time that we need. We're going to do one build today. We're going to do another build tomorrow. You know, don't get in a hurry. What happens is if you get in a hurry, you mess things up, and then if you got to take things apart and redo them, then it gets where it's not fun and you don't enjoy it. But we're just going to sit here and we're going to enjoy it, sip on our coffee. Not a race to get this thing put together. All right, we have three motors done. We're going to go to motor number four. The wires are pointing towards you. <coughs> you put the mounting plate, and now our two hex bolts through the holes. All right, turn it over. And now we are going to need our nuts. And this should be our last two nuts. And these shorter hex bolts, I'll show you where those go. But if you look, I have two of the little nuts left. And so they gave me exactly the number that I needed to do this job and no extra. So it's good. Everything that is there that's supposed to be there. But there's no margin for error. You cannot afford to lose one of these things because I would hate to have to try to find out exactly what this nut is. So we don't want to lose anything. All right, there we go. We're always we're making huge progress here already. Okay, so tighten that one. And guys, on this on this particular one, it's not that important. But man, on some of the things we do, you've got to develop a feel for how to tighten something without over tightening it. Okay, you want to tighten it without over -tight tightening it. All right, we have one, two, three four of these things done and so that is really really good we are getting this lower deck put together all right now what we need to do is from that uh, same little bag that says four motor we need to get eight count them eight of these little uh, short hex nuts so i have one two three four five six and you know what? They gave me one short. I am one short, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me look here and make sure that I did not drop one out. Elegoo, really? You shorted me one? Oh, that is not good. That is not good at all. I need to look here for a second. Man, the first 
the first one that I put together was not missing any of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. They shorted me one. All right, we are going to power on through this, but man, that is not good. That is not good. Okay, what we are going to do now, we've got, uh, what I need you to do is, do you see where the number three is with those four holes? Okay, those four holes, those need to go to your left. Okay, so you see how you have the number three here? And remember, we go one, two, three three, four, this is the top of the bottom deck. All right, the top of the bottom deck. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is when we mount these things on here, what you have to see is the wires go to the inside. The motor goes to the outside and the wires go to the inside. So wires to the inside, motor to the outside. Wires to the inside, motor to the outside wires to the inside, motor to the outside. So you need to get it like this, okay? But we're going to have to come from the other side with these screws, and we're going to have to come through the base and then put them into the little mounting bracket, all right? And so we're going to start here. I'm going to move these out of the way. We're going to start right here with these two screws. And so I'm going to come up through here. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way where you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to come up through here like this. All right. And now motor to the outside, wires to the inside. And now we've got to kind of drive these in. All right. We've got to kind of drive these in. Can you see? All right. I think I got it started. Now, guys, these are the ones that you cannot over tighten because we're driving these screws into aluminum, into the, that aluminum mounting bracket, and you can strip it. All right, you can strip it. And if you strip it, then you'll never be able to get it tightened again. So I'm just going to come down until it doesn't spin easily anymore, until it kind of stops. That one stopped, and that one stopped. Now I'm going to turn it an additional about an eighth of a turn. Okay, about an eighth of a turn. And now that is on there snugly. Motor towards the outside, wires towards the inside. All right, we'll do this next one. Motor towards the outside, the motor towards the outside, the wires towards the inside. Turn it over, put these in here. All right, and now try to get it lined up as best you can, kind of where it's sort of wanting to start. And now we will come over, and let's see if I got a bite on those. I think that one's in. Okay. Also, guys, the thing I found is I don't like to tighten one all the way down. I kind of like to go back and forth. All right. I like to go back and forth, and that way you don't end up cinching it down when the other one is not in a good position. So I like to kind of go back and forth. We're almost there. That one is stopped. That one is stopped. Another eighth of a turn, another eighth of a turn, say, to tighten it. Okay, we have two motors mounted. Man, this thing is going quickly, and I am trying to figure out what I'm going to do about that missing screw. Hold on just a second. Uh, I already put one of these. Hey, 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 hey. You remember? Elegoo, I apologize. I apologize, Elegoo, for accusing you of not putting all the parts in there. Remember, I'd taken one off to the side and showed you under the camera, so it was sitting over there all along. Now, we have to do some camera management here to get this thing to focus. Okay, we got brilliant focus now. All right. Uh, Let's go on now to motor number three. So here again, the motors to the outside, the wires to the inside, and I will come up here. Man, I was really surprised when I thought that screw was missing because I've been so fortunate with the stuff that I've gotten from Elegoo that things are not missing. And remember, we did the uh, we did the uh, super starter kit, 
and then I've already built one of these smart cars. This is smart car number two that I'm building, and I've never seen them not have all the parts in there. And also, it's really neat that all the holes are kind of lined up in the right spot, and I need to give it something to look at there so it'll stay focused. I really wish I could turn that autofocus off on the camera because it's a very high quality camera but some things it just doesn't like to focus on so we're going back and forth here okay and now that one stopped about an eighth of a turn more about an eighth of a turn more that is on there we have three motors done okay and so we are going to come up now with motor number four so we will go down through here and down through here with our two screws we will come over here and try to get motor number four remember motor to the outside what's wrong wires to the inside motor to the outside wires to the inside and now from the underside I'll try to get those started it's kinda you kinda gotta develop a feel for this where you get them started so that they don't fall out and then once they're started you can flip it over and we do not want to strip these things whatever we do okay this is going quite well I will say I hope you guys are having luck with it but the first one that I did I found much trickier because the instructions the instructions have the, ins you know, I mean, it has what you need to do it, but the instructions are not very verbose and they're sometimes not very clear. And so, like I say, I had a couple of problems the first time. Okay, that one's down, eighth of a turn. That one's down, an eighth of a turn. Boom, look at that. We have those motors on there. I love this build too. I mean, look at this. Everything is very secure and in place. Okay, we've got number three here. And then on the bottom is number four. This is the front of the bottom deck. So this is the forward direction of the car. And so I like that a whole lot. All right, now we are going to get our L298 motor controller. That is in your box with the, uh, with the electronics. Is this it? No, that is not it. That is more our mechanical components. Ah, here it should be in here. Let's get out the OL298N. And remember when we did the uh, Arduino projects, we learned how to use DC motor control. And so the unit that we used looked different than this, but it was sort of very similar in that it was a DC motor controller. And so this one is a beefier one. You'll also see on here that it's got a heat sink, which is good. Uh, why does it have a heat sink? Because this is controlling four motors, where I believe the one that we were using before was just controlling one motor. And uh, this has got a nice big heat sink on it. But really, operating this, you're going to be familiar with because it's very similar to what we had done before. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we are going to have to mount it on the bottom deck. Okay, and now what I want you to do is I want you to put the three down towards you because it matters whether you're like this or whether you're like this. Okay, so the three is towards you. The front of the bottom deck is towards you, pointing towards you. And then the heat sink goes opposite of you. The heat sink goes opposite of you. All right, now we're going to have to find another four of those little hex screws. Okay, and let's see. Uh, our four motor thing is empty, so it can't be for that. And so it will be one that is labeled, not for ultrasonics, okay, for the L298, for the L298. That's what it says on there, for the L298. Now this one, you'll notice, for the L298, it is not a Ziploc, and so we got to be careful. And that's why I like to open things with the X-Acto knife so that I hopefully don't completely mess up this envelope. All right, so we are going to need four of the 
bolts. Okay, one, two, three. And I believe these are all the same size in here, so that's good. We don't have to, to worry about the size. There are all four. Okay. I feel bad about uh, accusing Elegoo of shorting me apart. That was really bad. That was my mistake. I apologize. Now we need these standoff washers. Okay, you see these standoffs? We'll need four of those. All right. Four of those. And then we will need four nuts. So there's one, two, three. Need one more. Four. Now I'm going to put all the rest of the things back in the bag. And then just to be safe, because I can't close this, I'm going to put this whole bag in the motor bag. All right. And that way, I don't have any of those parts roll off on me because I can seal that close. Does that make sense? You don't want to lose these things. Okay, now for this, what you're going to do is the nut is going to go down. So we're going to go down, down from the top. That's not a nut, that's a bolt or a screw. Okay, so we're coming in from the top. All right, from the top. Now what we need is we need these standoffs. Okay, because you see you don't want all this stuff eating into the eating into your uh, deck. So we're going to put the four standoffs, one on each one. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can now put these down through the hole and I almost you see I wasn't paying attention you gotta pay attention that the heat sink goes away from you the heat sink is towards the back of the car opposite of the number three that you got okay and we just had a runaway standoff sometimes building these things it would be helpful if you had like six hands or at least three hands but we're going to see if we can get this all through here at one time. Oops, we have another runaway. We have two runaways. But we're going to power through this. You guys just got to kind of develop a feel for doing this. Uh, the problem is if I turn this whole thing upside down, and maybe I will turn the whole thing upside down. Can I hold all four of these? Do I have enough fingers to hold all of these? We'll see. You guys leave me a comment down below if you had a technique that made this a little bit easier. Okay, you see if I can kind of hold them now like this and now have gravity work as my friend. And now I'll come like this. If I can get those bottom two started, those are started. All right, boom. Okay, I got them all started. All right, so you see the heat sink is opposite the number three. All right, and all of the standoffs are in there. And do you see how nice those standoffs are? They keep those solder joints from interfering with the, uh, you know, those solder joints from driving down into the deck. All right, now I don't want to turn it upside down because I don't want to lose the progress I've made. So I'm just going to try to come and sort of reach under here and get those four screw, those four screws started, the four nuts started. And you know what? I lost one. All right, I see now that one of these fell out. So I'm going to have to kind of take this back out and see if I can get it in there. Okay, now I think I've got them all. And so I will try to... Guys, just try to get them started because once, the, once you get the four started, then it won't fall apart on you. Okay, I have three started. I am so close to getting this. All right, all four of them. Okay, and now 
I am with my fingers underneath here. Underneath here, I am holding the nut as I tighten from the top. And okay, that one kind of is tight till it stops. Now I'm going to go to the opposite corner. Always when you're putting things in, go corner to corner. So now those two corners are done. Now I'll come back over here and just kind of tighten it till it stops. This one tighten till it stops. So you go corner to corner and then corner to corner. Now I'm going to try to put a little bit of a tighten on it. This is not quite so tedious because you're driving into a nut and so you're less likely to strip it. So I can kind of give it you know, I don't know, still like an eighth of a turn after it stops. Okay, that is good. Now we'll come over and same thing going corner to corner, eighth of a turn, corner to corner, eighth of a turn. Okay, that one was slipping. Okay, that one. You do want to get these kind of snug because you don't want them to come loose later on. And they're snug, but I just want to make sure that there. Okay, I got all four of those snug. Now is a good time to plug your motors in. Okay, now uh, what I need you to see is, is that it matters a whole, whole, whole lot where you plug these things in. All right, where you plug these wires in. And so put the three to your right. Okay, the number three is to your right. And now let's start with this one above the three. Now, these will only plug in one way into, into the slots because they're keyed. But this one needs to go into this one, the nearest one to it. And it matters because nothing is going to work if you don't plug these things in right. And you see the two little ridges, the two little ridges on the connector go to the outside. And you want to make sure that you plug these in the right direction. Okay. And this might be a good point for me to try to show you a close-up. I don't know if these close-ups are helpful to you or if they just slow you down, but let's see if we can zoom in for a close-up here of this, if we can get it to focus. Okay, do you see how we've got those two ridges and they're to the outside? And then come on both sides with your thumbs and then go in. And then you see it should go pretty much all the way in like that. That's a great view there. All right. Now, same thing over here. Okay. Now we're going to do this one. And it goes in the one closest to it. Same side, closest to it. Make sure that you line the keys up and then like that. So you see red to the left, red to the left, black to the right, black to the right. Now down here, it's going to kind of be reversed where you are going to have red to the right. And this one is going to plug in to the slot nearest it like that. And then this one is going to plug in to the slot nearest it. All right. Now, if you've done this right, do you see that? It needs to be like that. Nothing goes in these front. Nothing goes in these front things yet. Okay, we'll take care of that later. All right, we have got quite a bit done here, but we got some more work still on this bottom deck. So let's keep going on our bottom deck. I believe this is, yeah, this is still the bottom deck. And so what we need to do is we need to put the line tracking module on it. And the line tracking module is going to go on side four. Okay, it's going to go on the bottom of the bottom deck, side four. And so we need to find that line tracking module, which should be in our nice little electronic box. And uh, it should hopefully be labeled. But I'll show you what it looks like.
Okay. This is it, and I'll show you what it looks like. Let's go back to our close-up view. I wish it was easier for me to switch back and forth. I'll try to get it easier next time, but okay. Do you see this? It has, looks like three blue LEDs on it. Three blue LEDs. It'd been nice if they had labeled this on the outside. Okay. But we'll open it up. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, you see that? So you've got kind of like an LED and then a detector. And so you're shooting out a light and then looking at how bright the return signal is. And then you can see, are you looking at something dark? Are you looking at something light? So we will come back over here now and turn that back off. And now we are on side four. And I uh, think what we will want to do is the... Uh, the connector goes towards the back. All right. But now we have to find those little screws. And uh, let's see if those little screws. Or one of these. No. It wasn't one of these that we had earlier. It is in this one that says for line tracking. Okay, do you see that four line tracking? We are going to need to open those up, and we are going to use all of these right now, I do believe. So this little package we will use up here. So what you want to do is uh, you're going to come, and do you see these little golden, these little golden bolts? You're going to get those four little golden boat bolts, okay? Four little golden bolts are going to come up through the board. The four little golden bolts are going to go, I lied. Give me just a second because I just really, really, really have to get this right. They are going to go, the four golden bolts go down through the module. Okay. Do you see that? The four golden bolts go through the module. All right. And I'm putting them through. So you hold up the part that doesn't really have anything on it that says Elegoo. You hold it like that. All right. And now, on the other side, you're going to put the four nuts. Okay. So one. This is, this is really confusing. The instructions are kind of confusing on this. But I think if you watch me do it, it'll make it easier. Okay, and so we're going to put the third nut. I really don't know why they didn't just use standoffs like on the other ones, but this is kind of a different mechanical setup. And I love those plastic, those little kind of plastic standoffs. But this, they're going with the kind of brass bolts. Okay. All right. I have almost got that on there. Okay, and I'm going to hand tighten it to start with. And now this we kind of want to get nice and snug. So I'm going to come back, hold the bolt with my fingers, and then... No, we don't tighten that. This... Darn it, these things we're just going to have to tighten with our fingers. And again, it'd be nice if we had a little tiny wrench with the kit. To my friends at Elegoo be nice to have a nice little wrench that would fit all these but that is about as good as we can do okay now we are ready to mount it to the bottom uh, deck and what you want is of course you want the sensors pointing towards the outside and then with the sensors pointing towards the outside 
And remember, we are on side four. Sensors pointing towards the outside. We're going to come up through the bottom with a small hex bolt, hex nut. And then we're going to go in. And then we're going to come to the opposite corner. And this is a little bit tight to get your finger in. OK, so we're going to get it like that. And then I'm going to look to get it lined up so I can start it. This is kind of tricky here. OK, so do you see how I'm now getting that started? OK, so that one is going to go in. All right. Now the other one, the other corner, I did. And so I'm going to snug that down a little bit. And now these other two should be pretty easy to get in because they should be lined up. But I'll tell you, these are really close to that little zip tie. And also, you want to make sure that you never cross-thread anything. You've got to be so careful that you don't cross-thread. And if it doesn't start in easy, back off and go again. Because if you ever cross-thread something, you are really in trouble. So don't cross-thread things. It should always start out very easy. If it doesn't start out easy, you have it cross-threaded. So we're going to tighten that. Come back, tighten. Come back, tighten. These you can kind of get pretty snug because you're not driving into aluminum. That, that looks really good. Man, we're making a lot of progress here. All right, so we have the four motors and we have the motor controller. All right. Is there anything else on here? There is nothing else on here. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to come back tomorrow or we're going to come back in lesson number three and we are going to do the mechanical build on the top deck and get it put together. So I think that we've made excellent progress. I really, really like this. This is just nice. Everything is lined up good. Everything's very sturdy. Everything is very nicely connected. They did a good job on this uh, on this kit, I really think. So we have got that put together, and this is a good break. You know, you guys can go and work on something else. Maybe think about signing up for the Jetson Nano lesson that I've got uh, I've got on this channel and then when we come back for lesson number three we'll finish the mechanical build okay guys really appreciate your attention glad you guys are playing along I'm excited about this project and I will be looking forward to seeing you in lesson number three again this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com you guys think about giving me a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel when you subscribe to the channel make sure that you ring the bell hey also really appreciate you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon. It's your help and encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look in the description. Think about clicking on the link, hopping over to my Patreon account, and hooking a brother up. Okay, guys, we will see you next week in lesson number three.